Yeah, so I'm going to take that thorny issue that councillors seem to avoid at, uh, at uh, most meetings, and it is the golf resort. Yeah. Right? That's what, what a lot of people are here about. There's one thing I want to, I'm going to clarify. Does everyone here know what a venture capitalist is? Yeah. Well, that's what the Jack Nicholas venture capitalist group are. They are venture capitalists. They don't have money of their own. Sorry. They will use the council. So, sorry, I did ask for a to say who they were or they were for. I'm, my name's Al Peters. I'm, I'm a resident of Hoylake. Right, lovely. Right, so it will, will uh, directly affect me. And what I'd like to say is this. People should be aware that, that uh, when you borrow money off a venture capitalist, but they don't have their own money. They will use money that they get their hands on. For example, council money. Venture capitalists don't have a very good record in many respects. I'll give you an example in Liverpool. Do you see any trams in Liverpool? They took a lot of money, this venture capitalist group. Yeah? Sorry, I'll, I'll try. Yeah, well, okay, I'll okay. Try. So we're back to the, the, uh, to the golf resort. And as I was saying, the information you put out on each sheet was, was the same information that was out on. Uh, uh, what is this, the uh, reference minute 31, it's the same as last time, it's out of date. Those four uh, 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 have diminished and those people in favour online is over 4,000 against. I'm, sorry, sorry, can I, can I make a point, because I know clearly there are other people who want to raise similar questions. It is a, and I try and be as, you know, uh, as reasonable as possible, but it's meant to be a kind of question time as opposed to, you know, Public outpouring. So, if you've got some comments, if you can bring them to a question, then we'll try and. Bring right. Them. The question is, you did answer the one question about lending money, but don't you think it's slightly disingenuous to say that we don't have any money or resources if you're lending money? That's a question. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Yeah. We'll get that answered, and then we'll ask some other people to ask the question. Okay. Is that okay. Do you want to? Do you want to put the, the mic back? Then? So, um, A, do we know who venture I'm going to ask David um, if he knows what a venture capitalist is. And David was the one who mentioned that the plan at the moment is to loan money to the developer to receive it back. So, do you just want to explain the, the thinking behind that? I'll give that an example. Oh, well. right, sorry. Um, I think on the golf result, you, the whole series of questions submitted, David Ball well provided me with answers to those rather than me simply sit and read them out. I've had copies made and we should have copies of those. The frequently asked questions are also there from last time. So all the questions on that sheet bar one, which is about the grass on the beach, are all to do with the golf resort. And those are the answers from the officer who's in charge of this project. I think we said last time the project has moved into a quiet phase, really, because there's a period now where the proposed development has to be subject to a lot of surveys and tests. And that's why there's been little activity forgotten about or we're trying to hide it away that the, 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 we work to instructions from cabinet and clearly that's what's happening and the illness is now the developer to carry out all those surveys so I've got nothing to add to the questions that, we're, that I've got the answers for and that I've circulated around to you. Can I, can I ask a bit of a question because, uh, or a clarification? Certainly in terms as the scheme has gone forward there seems to be the number of dwellings that are linked to the scheme seem to have increased quite a lot and there was also I think a question at a previous meeting where the, um, the same developer had been involved with a, with a different scheme. I think that was the point that was being made. I don't know whether you've had a chance to, you can tell us why the number of dwellings has increased and whether, we, whether the council is doing any um, What's the right word? Due diligence with regards to the, the proposed development. Yeah, I don't have the report with me, but the number of dwellings proposed hasn't increased since the last report went to council and was approved. But I'm talking about the scheme. I said the, the, the number of dwellings on, hasn't been modified since well before the last report went to cabinet, to cabinet and was approved to the next stage of the scheme. Yeah, so what, what, what is it now? Do we know well, I've got the figures. Well, well, because originally it was 70. Okay, uh, right, so I, I've got a feeling it's probably reaching the stage where we need to do the whole thing around the, uh, the golf resort again actually, so we probably need the right officer, yeah, and uh, 
and I'll ask Jerry, and says, Jerry wants to make a point. I think is this is the point at which we put in some sort of subnet to say we're not necessarily um, bound by what, we, what you say is your personal view type of thing. What, what I say is my personal view, yes. Okay. Um, I want everybody to know that we as local councillors are still totally opposed to the idea of the golf resort. There are so many reasons. One of the big reasons is the infringement of the green belt. We've got our chairman of the green belt here. I'm sure um, he'll say a word later, Rob Town. But, all, but also, we're very concerned about the track record of the group that's been the so-called venture capitalist group that's been given this job. They've already abandoned a scheme in the south, in, in, in North in South Wales. And we, they've only got a hundred pound capital, by the way getting the rest of it from this council, amazingly. The, this council is lending them the money to, to do what they want to do. And if they go bust, by the way, I don't think they'll, they'll, that this council will get any money back. Um, so we're very concerned about it. We're very concerned about the slow time that it's taking. Well, I was in favour of this scheme when it was first suggested about 15 years ago. Um, it's going on and on and on now. We're still waiting for these uh, surveys and reports. They're taking a long time. We're spending quite a couple of million pounds on consultants, although officially it's only 800,000, but there's a lot more than that. The quicker the council decides to abandon the Gulf Resort, the better. And we're continuing to oppose it. I just want you to know that. Thank you. This was raised at the last early forum meeting, and then it was the last early forum meeting was held in my ward in Pensby. And after that meeting, I, I, I met with a lot of residents who were very concerned. It is, there's no doubt, it's a very, very contentious issue. Um, and I can assure people that it is going to go through all the correct stages of due diligence and everything else. But what I proposed at the last meeting is to call another public meeting in Pensby in St Michael's which is on Pensby Road, the corner of Gills Lane and I'm going to do that. I've, I've been waiting for um, dates that RMP can attend and I'm also going to invite um, officers. The chief officer is David Ball and I've approached David and he said he's quite willing to attend if his diary um, is free that day, but he has got personal commitments and it will be on a Saturday. I'm also going to invite the leader of the council um, to come along just so we can clarify to the people where we're at, what we're up to and the due diligence and everything else. So I am proposing to call a public meeting fairly soon I hope. Um, so if you all be aware of that and I hope you come along. And it, it won't be a slanging match. The officers and the leader of the council will be there to answer questions, genuine questions and genuine concerns. And I think everybody sitting at this table recognises the contentious issue that this is. And we, as a council, we want to um, explain our position. You might still disagree or agree, but we want to ex explain our position properly. And I hope um, people in the audience now will be content with that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Chair. Uh, yes. I, I wondered, um, just, just for my own figures, because I know the importance of accuracy here, Councillor Ellis has, has now stated on one on one occasion the figure is far higher than 800,000 and just said himself £2 million. Pounds. Might you give me a breakdown of the £2 million, pounds, please? Well, okay. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure Jerry will provide that. But at the moment, it's, 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 it's public question time. So, right, got an indication of people want to ask questions, uh, and we are getting fairly close to eight o'clock. So, Rod, gentleman uh, there, and then we'll 
Get the rod first, yeah, come on. Uh, no, actually, Rod, no. No, I, I think you'll find we don't. You always get a good airing, but there's other people who have other questions to ask as well. Rod. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Rod Town, I'm chairman of the Royal Society, and I'm happy to be filmed. Um, I was just really wanted to pick up on an interesting statement that was made by David Armstrong uh, at the last, meeting, last constituency meeting. Uh, where he in fact uh, gave us some new information to the fact that the, the answer to the question about what the sequence would be between uh, the building of the houses and, and the building of the resort of the golf course itself. And it was interesting to note that he said that in fact it would be the houses would be built after the golf resort was built, after the golf courses were laid out. And this is actually in some ways very reassuring because the general feeling was that uh, it would be the houses that would be built first and then the uh, developers would suddenly find that they still find they couldn't manage to build the golf courses and they would disappear. But in fact, if that's not to be the case, it, doesn't, it does then raise an, another question. And that is, the whole idea of the building of these, I think it's 160 houses, is the latest uh, figure um, of the proposed development, the number of luxury houses to be built. If the houses are built after the golf course is laid out, we can't quite understand why the houses are being included in the scheme at all. Because the whole idea, as we understood it in the Royal Society, was that the houses themselves would be what they call the enabling development. I.e., this is a provision within the National Planning Policy Framework, which uh, enables developers to actually throw in some goodies um, to entice the um, local authority to give them planning approval. Now, in this case, I've always thought, the society has always thought, that it was the houses themselves that would be built first, and the money raised from those houses would then enable them to have the finance to enable to them to complete the course itself, or the courses themselves. But if this is not the case, why are the houses being included at all? I mean, and the second point I'd just like to take, you know, take work was in, in respect to what the council just said about a meeting. And I'm sure you know, we'd be very pleased for another meeting to take place. But in fact, I could remind him that in fact, Margaret Greenwood um, took on the uh, organisation of a meeting um, near the beginning of December last year, which uh, was um, held to a packed audience. And very many people spoke very eloquently about you know, and their opposition to the scheme. Um, and indeed, um, the leader of the council and David Ball both attended and gave their version of, uh, of how they saw the scheme. That, all that initiative seems to have rather died in the sense that a lot of questions were asked, were invited by um, Councillor Greenwood, uh, sorry, um, Margaret Greenwood, um, to be posed to the council um, to answer questions that were unanswered at that meeting. Now that whole initiative seems to have died and it would be great if in fact um, it would be possible for Margaret Greenwood, who obviously isn't here this evening, to actually pick up the initiative again and, and uh, continue to ask the questions that so many people want the answers to. So that's really, but I'm not in any way suggesting that we should have heard anything in council. Oh, sorry, it's just here. Uh, you know, we'd be delighted, in fact, you know, if you to hold that meeting. Uh, but really, um, the leader of the council needs to come clean with us. Thank you. Thank you. No, just been. So, in the development, is it that the golf course now comes first and the houses come after? Is that, is that right, David? Well, the information that Rod has referred to was information I obtained at the last meeting. I haven't got the notes with me, but you've repeated back to me what I remember saying at the last meeting. And I've got that from David Ball's office. Um, that all the earthworks and the amazing works and the golf course being laid out would have to be done first. And, and I can go back and double check it again. But, um, um, that, that's that's what I was told. Um, I think in terms of the houses being in the deal, my understanding is that it's it's when you get to the end of the deal, it's the total amount expended in the houses that are there as part of the total project. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, yes, I think the gentleman in the, in, the sh in front of the gentleman in the short. Life yeah. notes. Yeah. 
Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Nicholas Lester. I'm a resident of Forest Road in Mills. Three brief questions regarding the parking scheme, on the, uh, the cultural parking scheme. Um, so the first time that we think so far, he's not covering any ground we've already been through. Um, so I'm a father of three, parent of two children at Great Mills Primary School. Uh, for some years now, the school has encouraged parents to park on the promenade uh, to relieve congestion from the school. Um, it's very tight, you know, hard to navigate roads. Um, so my feeling is that a parking scheme on the promenade is going to force all the parents to park on the roads closest to the school and in fact creating a congested issue where there isn't one at all to deal with. Um, so I'm quite concerned about safety there. What considerations have you made um, with key stakeholders such as schools in the area? Um, have you had any thoughts about that? Second brief one is um, my understanding that we're all view Newspapers predicate its existence on disseminating information to Mel's, sorry, to rural residents. Um, but on my last inspection of this publication online, there's not a single mention of the parking scheme. So is the rural view there only for good news? Yeah. Um, they, it would have to be very short if it was. Uh, <laughs> uh, lastly, my understanding of creating a traffic order such as this has come along with some certain statutory requirements. Uh, we cannot be used to generate just general revenue for the council. Um, one of those statutory requirements, for example, is of the, uh, to relieve congestion. I sent a freedom of information request to the council to understand what information it had about congestion, traffic numbers, parking numbers, uh, surveys. Um, <coughs> council responded, we have none. Um, but however, we want the scheme effectively to fill a government funding shortfall. What response do you have to the suggestion that maybe the council is acting beyond its legal powers uh, in this scenario? Um, and that's everything, thank you. Okay. Thank you for that being so succinct. Stuart. Stuart, you're the, the, the man responsible for the car parking charges. Thank you very much for the, the comments. So obviously, the, the consultation process is still uh, underway. Uh, so, so, there are certainly issues that you um, outlined with regard to schools. Um, that's, that's the sort of stuff we need to hear so we can take that all into account when the, the final scheme is designed. Um, I can I'm sure um, the committee and the you know, members and members of the public that uh, the money is not being used to raise general funds uh, because of the money ra no raised. Uh, from parking charges on uh, off on street parking, um, with, with the, with the legal requirement for suspension on transport related schemes. Um, so what, what you know, what you know, we, we mustn't forget is um, no, no threats for austerity. And you know, last year we have to you know, find 61 million pounds worth of savings. This coming year we've got 45 million to find. So um, money available to spend on transport projects. Um, is, is uh, de decreasing quite rapidly, sadly. Um, we won't be introduced to the park charges uh, unless we have to. Um, we can get to the, the stage of last resource. Uh, that's something I want, personally want to do. I, th I think you know, our country parks and our beaches and our coastal areas should, should be freely available. But in terms of uh, local residents, I'm going to say the those points on board and uh, feed them into the consultation process. Okay. Uh, that sounded almost like feed them into the consultation process, but we're going to do anyway. I'm sure that's not what you meant because I think you're in a kind of way. Chair, Chair, the decision was taken at the last point, just um, as, as well, no, so the decision to put the charges has been taken. Um, no, I think your, 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 your party had the opportunity to lobby your government to ensure we have sufficient funds to fund the services that our residents <coughs> uh, depend on. Uh, but, but obviously, since 2010, you've not said this, but you've not said that challenge. Well, again, I, I try not to instigate political arguments, uh, but will respond if provoked. And let's be clear, as a uh, gentleman said, it is illegal or not allowed to take money from a from a parking scheme to raise money to subsidise. Uh, Council, other council services. I, I think what you're saying is, can I, can I just, you had a go so I'll finish, and this is my understanding anyway of what was said. Uh, what you've then gone on to say, what you as administration have done is take the money 
away from spending on roads, pavements, potholes, etc. And now you're trying to fill that gap by increasing parking charges. So I do hope, I do hope, given you are, uh, you have a responsibility to consider all those objections before you make a final decision, that that's being approached with an open mind. And I'll be really concerned if it isn't. Andrew, you, I think you suggested you wanted to say something. Um, yeah, thanks Nick for raising the point, I'm doing it so eloquently as well. Um, I did survey Mel's and Hoylake um, parade uh, last Sunday. It was 24 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. I think that's about a mile and a half long. There were 75 cars there at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So I do wonder where the council gets its figures for its revenue on this, because that 150 quid on the best day of the year isn't going to go very far. It certainly won't go very far to replacing or, or funding the £350,000 this scheme is costing. So I think even the council's figures is a two and a half year payback. And this is the council that has no money, but they're going to wait two and a half years on their own figures, which I would dispute to get the money back. And I quite agree with Nick about Mel's, uh, Great Mel's Primary. Uh, they've tried to do the best they can for local uh, residents near the school and get people parking the way get exercise to the kids because it's a couple hundred yards walk. Um, again, a great move that is undermined by this proposal. And finally, it is an outrage that on Hoylake Wells and South Parade in West Kirby, um, residents are going to be charged £8,000 to park outside their own house. That is an outrage. Okay, and I think so say, uh, an awful lot of people that I know, uh, if this has created a lot of uh, traffic, certainly for me and for David and other colleagues and all those people, and right across the world in fact in Wallace here, yes. etc. So, yes, David. Um, just to briefly add to the concerns, I'm obviously a resident of Mel's and I also represent West Kirby and Thurston. My concern is really the unintended consequences that will clearly result from car parking charges being levied in West Kirby. We have a major problem already with the side roads that go between Banks Road and the promenade that are filled with three-storey Edwardian Victorian properties, most of which have been turned into flats. The frontage across most of these properties is only a car and a half width anyway. Most people in those flats will have a car, so you're talking about trying to accommodate three cars in a bay that's only one and a half cars wide, which is why at the present time residents in those areas are forced, it isn't a choice, they are forced to park on the promenade overnight or they're forced to park in side streets uh, which cause even more congestion higher into the centre of West Kirby. The other concern of course is the impact on shoppers, uh, not shops, retail uh, establishments, restaurants, coffee bars etc who at the moment are relying on the ability for residents and visitors to park in the side roads during the day to actually conduct their business and try and survive. Now I believe, and it'll, it'll be proved in future, I'm sure, as an unintended consequence, is that the financial and commercial viability of a lot of these organisations will be very sadly compromised, which is going to, in itself, reduce the revenue the council will receive from business tax and everything else. So it's one of these things where a, an idea that was I, brought forward clearly with the idea of raising some money to try and support the um, economy Starting to support the ha uh, highway situation is going to have the unintended consequences of damaging our tourist offer. And I think there's a bit of a silent mentality here where one side has come up with an idea and not even taken the trouble to discuss the implications of it with other members of the council who are trying to make this a viable um, authority to put for the benefit of uh, visitors and traders and local people. So, my final appeal is please, please think again. The damage you are causing by introducing these parking charges has not been fully taken into account and I would ask that you please do that before you make an irrevocable damaging uh, change to the whole character and nature of what is our lovely rural holiday resort. Thank you. Question you were going to ask you later, yeah. Yep. I was wondering if you could request 
or had some serious consultation about the traffic in um, China Farm Lane. I think we need a microphone for this no. lady. Elaine, do you just want to pop around the corner and just stand there? It's all right. Okay. Thanks. serious consideration for parking to the highway engineers and the police on China Farm Lane to be reviewed. Last night a tractor and trailer laden with straw was speeding along China Farm Lane and was involved in an accident with horses and riders. My granddaughter was thrown from her horse. She was taken to hospital with concussion and a bleed to her head and also led to a CT scan. Police have been informed and we have a crime number. This is not the first accident. There is a large stables there with young children and adults and lots of horses. I request safety measures to be before there is a fatality. And, and I think, uh, having, I travel down that road a, a fair bit as well. Uh, and there's nothing to say to the stables. There's no real warning in terms of alerting there's anybody who's driving. So there's a stable there which houses a lot of horses, a lot more than I actually originally thought. There's one of the smallest 30 mile an hour signs I've ever seen. That faces the ridge. There is nothing showing any form of speeding signs coming off the West Kirby lanes. Okay, so that's, we've made a note of that. So. This officer who may or, may or may not turn up to the next meeting will be able to give us a response. So, okay. Um, I, I meant to ask Jerry to mention, it seems as though everyone's publicising public meetings tonight. I think Jerry wanted to publicise the public meeting you've can, got going. Can we just, yes, uh, regarding the parking charge? It's we're supposed to be a consultation stage at the moment, and as you know, all it is is people are invited to write in to the council and tell them, but there's no feedback. So we local councillors have arranged our own proper consultation, and this coming Saturday morning at 11 o'clock at well, 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 uh, uh, Melrose Hall in Melrose Avenue in Hoylake, we're having a consultation meeting where very kindly two senior officers of the council have agreed to attend and let people talk directly to them and express their concern. Sadly, at this stage, uh, neither the leader of the council nor Stuart have said that they are able to attend, but I'm hoping that they will attend, but I don't think they're going to. So, at 11 o'clock this Saturday morning, if you'd if you like to be, and also that I understand that there's a, there's a parade in, in West Kirby, Andrew, is it on? Three o'clock on South Parade, if you'd like to parade to show your concerns about it. We're not are organising that, by the way. And some of the residents are organising it. That's Saturday. All right, Jerry. Thank you. Okay, well done. Uh, thank you for that. Gosh, there's, you know, all this agitation and so on. It's all very good, isn't it? Uh, right, I'm conscious that we've gone over by, well, no, we're early an hour in, and I'm also conscious I'm accused of never letting, and those regular attendees will realise that's not quite accurate either. Uh, the uh, golf course action group have a say. So, and there's a couple of people here who want to talk on behalf of, or raise the question on behalf of the action group. Okay, gentleman in the green t-shirt. Bearing in mind this is a question time, um, as opposed to a um, half hour speech. I get to make the half hour speech. Right, my name is Phil Simpson. I am the chair of the Stop Oil Lake Golf Course Action Group and also defend our open spaces. Um, I have got a question. Good. And the question reads. Uh, now that the council have imposed the freeze on non-essential spending, please can you clarify 
if expenditure on the Hoylake Golf Resort is classed as non-essential spending. In December 2016, the Council approved a further £595,000 to be spent on Hoylake Golf Resort. Please can you clarify if this money is now being spent and if not, will it now be frozen as non-essential spending? In the current economic climate, with every penny needed to be accounted for, is it right that £26 million should be loaned to a flawed joint venture vehicle, NJVG, Nicholas Joint Venture Group, going totally, and it is totally, against Labour Party national policy? Um, that's my question to the councillors here. Um, we have got, we have sent, or shall I say, the public have sent 1,940 letters to all four MPs on the bill. And I suggest if you're going to hold a meeting on this golf resort, a public meeting, you don't just invite Margaret Greenwood, you invite, invite all four MPs. Because all four MPs, it, it affects every single ward. I was in New Ferry the other week. Alison McGovern came up to me just as I was putting the table up. And she said to me, and the first question to me was, do you all live in Oil Lake? I said, no, we don't, actually. And I pointed out that we live Wallasey, Birkenhead, Stranglia, uh, Greasby, Pensby, and all over the place. We are not all, and we are non-party political, by the way. I want to get that in because we're being accused of being NIMBYs. We're not NIMBYs, but environmentally, it's and that's it. Okay. I, I, <laughs> can I thank you for what I think is a really nice question, actually. I didn't, um, I, again, that, no one said, we, uh, whether it's just an issue of timing or whatever with cabinets, but, you know, there was, uh, no one had given us an indication of something happened before the election in terms of the uh, money was running out. So maybe people just knew a few weeks after the election and had to do anything about it. <coughs> Which, I, if that is the case, I find a little bit worrying that everything's being run by, week by week. But given we've got two members of the cabinet that are here that took the view that there would be no non-essential spending, um, could you answer, answer the question about whether the golf resort counts as non-essential spending or not? You can vote a friend if you can. <laughs> <laughs> My understanding is they've made it better than me on this, that if this is for new expenditure, so there's a freeze on any uh, additional new expenditure. Um, and so the money that's been committed to, and I believe this is, again, uh, open for correction, but I believe this is mostly about then um, the undertaking of those studies that need to be done on the land, um, the proposed land. Um, I believe that will still go ahead because that was committed prior to the freeze. I think it's about new spending. Um, Okay. So, and, 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 and as Stuart just um, said to me then, it's important to note that, that the, those um, ecological studies, the additional studies pertaining to the actual resort, would be paid for by the developer. But I'd appreciate if David could give me a uh, clear indication about the uh, our aspect there. Uh, go away, David, yeah, absolutely. So, my understanding, you can correct me here, that what's committed will be spent, but if anyone came back asking for any more money, the answer would be no. Is that right? No, I think um, this is an officer decision, so it isn't a political decision. We have a recent, fairly recently appointed Director of Finance. The Director of Finance and the Council has a statutory legal duty about the budget scholar section 151 officer. The new, the, the new Director of Finance simply wishes to satisfy herself that across the whole organisation, and it's a big organisation, um, several thousand staff and a big budget still, um, that all officers are making the proper decisions in terms of how money is spent. You, you hear the political debate about the size of the budget, and you know the position that we're in. Um, it, 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 that's, that's what it is, and that's what's been asked to, asked to be done. It doesn't apply to capital schemes or capital expenditure, it only applies to day-to-day -day revenue, so it wouldn't apply to expenditure. 
expenditure on schemes in the capital programme or large schemes like this one. It's simply to make sure that officers are making the right decisions on day-to-day -day expenditure. There are a whole long list of other exceptions like care packages and so on for people. It's, it, it is day-to-day -day expenditure and checking that when vacancies arise that they go through a process of being checked as well to see whether the post can be held or can be managed with that. Which, which in itself slows recruitment down. <laughs> So, so just to be clear then, in my mind, and I will, we will have another question. So what we're saying is, this wasn't the cabinet deciding not to, to stop spending any money. This was the instruction from the section 151 officer, is that right? The, the 151 officer. So it was a, because she is able to write a certificate she to say, she you that. must do this. She hasn't done that. What I said was, she wants to satisfy herself, do a check. I think I see it more as a spending check. It's not like the spending freezes with that. She wants to satisfy herself that across the whole organisation, where lots of people place orders every day and buy things and secure things and order things, that everybody understands the financial position that the council is in. Clearly, we you've heard it said tonight, we have a further £40 million worth of savings to be found next year. Okay, but this is the budget that we agreed to put into. Anyway, okay. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have one last question. because. You said you, you were going to go at 8 o'clock, so I do enjoy it so much. I can see that. And, um, the one last question is going to come from the lady at, in, the, in green, if that's okay. Uh, hi, my name's Karen O'Rourke, I'm from West County. Um, it's just a follow up question, really, about the Nicholas Joint Venture Group. Um, You've responded on the, the answer sheet here tonight, confirming that none of the studies for the golf resort have yet started, even though the report to Cabinet in December suggested that they will be starting in February. Um, we were just wondering why there's been a delay. And we also found out yesterday that one of the directors of Nicholas Joint Venture Group has resigned. Um, we're just wondering why they are taking so long to um, start these studies. Is there a problem with the funding and uh, why has the director resigned? Perhaps it's personal reasons, but he's not resigned from any of his other companies. Um, so we're just wondering uh, what's happening with the Nicholas Joint Venture Group. Are they struggling to get some finance? Thank you. Right. And of course, no one casts any aspersion. They just seem very reasonable questions to me. But what I what I am sensing, and it, it's probably been a while, uh, that actually what we need to do is to bring uh, David Bull along as well to give us a, an absolute update where these uh, where he can respond to those very specific questions. So if it was meant to start in February, why hasn't it? If if the if we have done due diligence around the various joint venture company and, and, and so on and so forth, that can be aired and, and um, probed and assurance sought or otherwise. Notwithstanding there are, there are clearly differences of opinion about whether it should go ahead or not, there are clearly real questions about, um, about the whole process that need to be picked up and I think would be better. And notwithstanding this is a matter that impacts across Wirral, I do think it is quite a specific uh, Wirral, the Wirral West constituency committee, given it's going to be here, also has a very specific interest in where that's going. So, would can I just ask, get an indication from the committee whether we'd welcome at the, at the next meeting that we have a, a proper full and thorough update from David Bull about where this scheme is actually up to and what the issues are. Is that okay? And that, that can feed in from the Wirral Society to have the, from the, the questions that were asked. We'll also have the benefit of your public meeting mind, where we can we can try and draw some of these these strands together. Is that okay? Just yeah. ahead of that, if you, if you email me the, the questions, I'll get the answer to the first one. I don't know whether I can get the answer to the second one, because it's not a matter of the council, the directorship, but I can certainly find out from David Ball and email you back as to what, what the issue is about. Uh, again, I don't know the legals and lots of stuff, but I would think, if the directors are changing in a joint venture company, the joint venture is with us, uh, then I think we would probably want to know why the, what the changes are within that company. That would be a, a matter of interest. 
Okay, I think we've given all of that a really good go in terms of questions, the big issues that are around and, and the answers as best we could. And I think we've also highlighted areas that we need to keep further investigation. Coming out of that for me, David Reese is going to come along to the next meeting where we can also talk about uh, talk about what's going on in terms of uh, Heron, uh, the issues around uh, the other issues that have been raised by by people, the parking and so on and so forth, the impact that has, uh, and and also uh, in terms of um, the point that uh, Elaine raised, we've had a good go around, and a new issue, because I hadn't been heard that there was talk of closing uh, um, uh, Woodchurch Leisure Centre, uh, so that was really interesting, I didn't even know there were informal uh, conversations going on with the staff, so that that's really interesting, thank you for that, and we'll get some sort of responses from that. And of course the whole issue around the, uh, the golf resort which we will pick up as well. So I think that's been really productive, maybe more than light in some cases, but we've, we've got a, a way through to find out where we can get some of those answers next time. So thank you very much everyone for that. I think we're content that we move on to the other elements within the agenda which are constituency managers report that's been circulated, it's been circulated to colleagues. David, do you want to say something? I don't know that it has been circulated. I think you've had the, you've had the golf resort ah, sorry. questions, you've had the questions from the... Very briefly, the constituency managers update, um, since March 17, there were 20 community projects funded as part of the Small Grand Big Difference Fund. Three projects have been completed with a deadline of the 24th of August for the remainder. Three projects that have been completed are the Friends of Hoylake and Wells in Blue, uh, updating deteriorated flower beds in Mel's Parade Gardens, and they're currently looking to improve that further. The Greasby Community Association, Green and Blue in Greasby, uh, working with Nest Botanical Gardens, and trees into Coronation Park, and they help with the meshing and the support for those trees. The Pensbury Recreation Centre funding was used to revamp the entire living entrance land at the entrance to the centre, and a group of planted trees and plants. Um, there's also been further work with United Utilities and Amy, who have sponsored and paid for the emptying, cleaning and refilling of the bolting lane line um, in Hoylake. Um, that followed a similar scheme in New Brighton. Um, that had been raised by the Constituency Committee and also the Hoylake Model Boat Club. And the Mayor is going to go and reopen the lake later this month. Um, since the last meeting, the team have resolved 32, they've had 32 issues raised with them by various groups and have managed to resolve 22 of those so far. And there are three other projects, with, there were two other projects where there were underspends. One was Flourish at Ford Way, which is a local community gardening group with help from the Whittle Met College Princess Trust team who um, worked on the second memorial garden on the early wood church and brought it back into use after it fell into disrepair. And the second one was the West Kirby and Thurston and Hoy Lake and Mills West Kirby Dropping. The group was set up to help those with a degree of mental health, providing somewhere to go to be with other people to be accepted and through interaction with others and the funding helps support towards running that group. And the engagement officer is also working on the Love and the Live initiative with local groups now having equipment on hand for use by the typical groups and the High Tiders get a particular mention and they work with the council to support the future approaches. Okay, thank you for me, accept that report and thank if you can thank the team on our behalf for the great work that they do. Uh, the, um, the next item we've got, we've got an update from community.